Jeremy Miner. And how are you currently employed? I'm currently a deputy for a sheriff's office in New Bowling County. Can you describe what's, who you see in this photograph and what is happening right now? I believe it's Mr. Moreno's wife is filming the deputies on scene as they're standing outside the property. And I believe he's speaking with uh, Sergeant Duquette about uh, retrieving his handgun that was issued to him by the county. Based on his EEOC complaint filing, did it cause uh, a negative and harmful environment to the agency in that it um, caused threatening emails? I did not have any threatening emails. Uh, threatening letters? Not that, I, not that I understood or were aware of. Threatening social media? I know what that's in reference to, but it had nothing to do with Mr. Moreno. Um, threatening phone calls? Again, I know what those were based on, and again, it had nothing to do with Mr. Moreno. And I'm going to go up, I'm going to show up there on Monday with about six people and our cameras and our crew. I'll have a lawyer with us, and we're going to film all of your private vehicle license plates. And then we're going to broadcast them to 35 million people to show you what the First Amendment can do. Since Jay Miner doesn't, you know, wants to press in the First Amendment, we'll be waiting for him to get out of his car. Do you recall filling that out? I do. And what's in relation to? Uh, there was a request for a report to be made in response to Mr. Moreno's um, allegation that he was hazed during his swearing-in ceremony. And what was your observation as far as any hazing? I, I didn't really see that it was hazing. I knew that the constable was irritated that he was being allowed to come back to the office and that she was so much flustered so that she messed up on the oath as she was reading it. And based on your um, sworn affidavit related to your review of the um, election issue with uh, Deputy Moreno, what was the result of this inquiry? I was instructed to go ahead and obtain the uh, leave request from Deputy Moreno and that the constable would honor his request. And did he follow through with signing those leave forms? He did. He, he initially also wanted to make reference that he was being forced to do so, even though it was his own voluntary actions that enacted this whole meeting. Based on your observations during the time um, of the constable's tenure, did you see what would, in your opinion, rise to the level of Leonisio Moreno and Chris De La Cerda being targeted in any way? I don't believe it was targeting, per se. I believe it was the fact that the constable was focusing on them because of the fact that they were intentionally um, trying to mess with the everyday duties of the constable's office because of the fact that that was part of their agenda because of the fact back and forth between each party. But you believe that he is a truthful and honest person? I believe he is, but I believe his motives at the time were guided by the fact that he had a loathing for her as she did for him. And that they were going after each other to the best of their abilities in a cat fight, tit for tat. A cat fight? Yes. Yeah. Imagine what you're saying. You're saying that, that, that basically she had a cancer in her office that was trying to do whatever he could to cause the office harm. She had multiple individuals such as that. Okay, but let's talk about Moreno. Okay. He was a cancer. The guy you socialize with, he believes in credible, honest person. Um, he was a cancer in her office. You, you would, I mean, that's that's basically from your description what I did. I believe she was a cancer to her own office. And, and I'm not saying you're wrong to do it. I think that, you know, you, you, you go to the court based on, like, hey, this is the... Just so, just so I'm clear and everybody's clear, this is what the policy is. As far as what's in your head, you, you wrote out what you believe the policy is, right? No, I pretty much reiterated exactly what the policy stated. I didn't do this other than, being that for, other than the fact that she wanted to cover her back for whatever reason because of the fact that he made an issue of it. And this, to me, would not have been a necessity at all in any office, department, or agency because it's a junk report. Say a junk report. Yes, it's, it's a frivolous report that's not necessary. On that report, not only is it the policy and procedure, but even if it wasn't, it's just a sensible way to run a constable's office. Again, I'm not going to go and enforce anything that's not part of policy procedure, rather at the constable's office 
at the county level because there's no merit to it if it's not written down. If there's no law, there's no policy, if there's nothing that dictates a certain action, even though it should be expected to be there, how am I to stand on any foot to take action against a person if they don't follow something that doesn't exist? All right, uh, we're going to recess for the day. We will resume tomorrow at 10.30.